I think we're going to jump into lightning talks then. Um, John is going to go first. So. Yeah. I'm uh, Sean McCullough. I work at Groupon on the uh, front end team. And I just wanted to go over two <laughs> cool little things that I've been uh, using recently. Uh, first on, uh, how many of you guys have ever used YSlow to kind of compute metrics for a front end site? Awesome tool. Uh, very, uh, how many of you guys have heard of PhantomJS? So yeah, if, for those not in the know, PhantomJS is a headless version of WebKit. So it's a full WebKit rendering engine, but it just doesn't render anything to a screen. Uh, so it's not a real browser, but it's pretty close to how an actual WebKit browser would work. Um, recently, they just came out with a kind of external version of YSlow. Uh, so you can actually run YSlow in an automated fashion. So uh, how many of you guys have ever done, like, have a crazy test suite, like using Jenkins or something like that, that you, you, push, through, you push your code through before a release? So you probably should all start doing that. But um, when, you're using, when you're using something like Jenkins, uh, there's the test anywhere or test anything protocol. So you can, if, as long as you conform to the protocol, you can uh, either pass or fail a build based off of a certain set of criteria. Uh, so combining YSlow and PhantomJS, you can actually get um, a YSlow score that feeds into the test anything protocol and get the output uh, that would pass or fail a build. So here's an example uh, if you just want to run against google.com. So this is just, this is actually just running YSlow against Google. And we can get an idea of the overall score, uh, you know, each one of the grades. So Google apparently doesn't use a CDN. Uh, there are four static components on the page. So we can integrate this right into Jenkins, and a build will immediately pass or fail. There's a bunch of options you can throw against this. Um, I would highly recommend checking this out. If you just do a Google search for why slow Phantom JS, you'll find this website, and it has a whole bunch of stuff that you can configure. Uh, you can either just do stuff like getting a waterfall and doing performance regression testing on a site. So every time you make a change, you can see if your site got significantly slower between the two of them. Uh, another quick thing is uh, how many of you guys do like end-to-end -end testing or integration testing? Anybody suffer through it using Cucumber or something terrible like that? I hate Cucumber. I think it's terrible. I don't, I don't really think it helps uh, solve any problems. I think it makes a lot of things a lot harder. Uh, but we should be able to actually handle um, doing most of our end-to-end our -end testing in just pure JavaScript now. So here's an example of a... Uh, integration test that's using uh, Mocha and uh, Zombie.js. So Zombie.js is another kind of like headless web, uh, web runner, um, but it's written in pure JavaScript. It uses JS DOM that Patrick had mentioned earlier on, uh, and it renders a full DOM in, pure, uh, in a V8 context and allows you to do pretty much anything that you would do with client-side JavaScript without having to boot up even something as, as high, like heavyweight as PhantomJS. And if you look right through here, it's a, it's, I mean, it follows Mocha. So if you've ever used RSpec or something like that, it's got a similar syntax to it. But you can write integration tests very easily right through there. And this will run as if it was running in the context of a, an actual web browser. So you can actually click on a link and go to a new page. Um, it just so happens this is actually testing a Backbone app. So we can assert that a full page load was not actually being done. Um, we can you know, check states of our, our JavaScript within the code. It's pretty awesome. And it gives you also a really nice, um, really nice testing output. So we can just do do this. And this is against a live server. You can see it's actually just running and hitting my server, making a bunch of requests. You get to see like the response times and all of your steps as it goes through. Um, I don't, there are levels of integration you can get. So if you want to do something like Gherkin, where you use those cucumber like step definitions, you can actually shim this on top of this framework and port some of your tests over. Uh, this way you can run some of your tests, uh, your integration tests without using uh, Selenium. So you can actually run it pretty quickly and pretty painlessly, and even a, in a development environment. So uh, definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, Zombie.js, uh, Mocha as a testing framework, and then PhantomJS and YSlow, a couple of things that you can do to make your end-to-end -end testing um, and your kind of overall uh, client-side performance metrics a little bit more transparent. So thanks.